Modern web development is notoriously complicated. When I first picked this stuff up, I found it very difficult to understand all of the moving parts, including things like Babel, TypeScript, Webpack, Vue and React, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do in this video is try and cover off all these different tools and how they work by starting off with the most simple application possible and slowly adding each of these tools, seeing what problems they solve and what problems they might introduce. So let me set the scene for you. It's around the early 2000s. Websites are still relatively simple. They're mostly static content, maybe with a bit of JavaScript. And that's what we see over here on the left. We have this good old programmer having a great old time. He wrote his code and then he just uploaded it to a server and everything was ready to go. And he has this nice counting website. Skip forward 15 or 20 years and we have a slightly less happy programmer doing exactly the same thing, building exactly the same application, but he has to use Babel and TypeScript and Webpack and all these other frameworks. So let's kind of take a bit of a walk down memory lane and see how all of this stuff has come together. Let's get started right now. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create an index HTML. I've already started off one nice and simple. We're just going to remove these script tags and start again. So the first thing we need to do is create some elements. We're going to start off with a button and this one is just going to show increment. All we need to do now is create one more element that's going to be a h1 tag and we're going to start with a count of zero. The next thing we're going to do is add some interactivity and of course we're going to do that with a script tag. The first thing we're going to need is a function that increments count. Let's just go ahead and call that one inc. We're going to say count is plus equal to one and then we're going to create a new variable count is equal to zero. Of course, we have to use ES5 JavaScript, including things like var, and we can't use arrow functions because it's still the early 2000s and people have really old browsers. Anyway, the final thing we need to do is increment this number. So let's go ahead and give it an ID. I'm just going to call it h1 for now. And we need to make sure we increment that by saying document.getElementById. We're going to go ahead, grab our element, and then we're just going to increment that by saying text content is equal to count. Let's go ahead and give this one a try. So we head back to our browser and refresh the page. Uh, we can see nothing is happening because I opened the wrong file. Let's go ahead and open index.html and we have this. This is our uh, HTML file, not really what I was hoping for. Let's go ahead and try again one more time. And we have a bit of a problem. Why is it not rendering the correct content? I'm actually doing view source. That's another very old school thing to do. What I really want is just to open the file. And you can see now everything is not working. It looks like I've made a mistake. What we forgot to do was add our event listener. So let's go ahead and say on click and just call the increment function. And this is all going to work. Apparently it's not going to work because I didn't refresh the page. Now it is. So of course we haven't got hot reload. It is still the early 2000s. I kind of forgot about that. We have to refresh the page manually and everything is working correctly. So far so good, but your application is going to inevitably get bigger. And it's not very scalable to put all your code inside of a script tag. What we're going to do is move it to a separate file by creating a new file called index.js. This is going to be a fairly simple migration. I'm just going to copy and paste that one over and that's all we need to do. Finally, we need to import this or not really import, we need to include it by saying source and just say index.js. If we did everything correctly, we can see the website is still working. So far, so good. As websites get bigger, it's obviously not very scalable to put all your tags inside a single body as well. So what we're going to do is move these out. And there's not a great way to do this other than moving this from HTML to JavaScript. So that is exactly what we're going to do by creating a new file or actually using the existing file called index.js and moving these over there. We are going to need, a, need to write a little bit of JavaScript. Just to save a bit of time, I prepared a utils file and this contains a single function called create element. It's going to take a type, for example, a div, an ID, some content, and some events. All we're going to do is create the, uh, create the element. We're going to assign some values to it. We're going to loop over these using object.entries. This is some very new JavaScript, so we're going to have to find some way to make it work in old browsers. Add the event listener, append the element, and then return the element. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this working. The first thing we need to do is create our button. I'm going to say var, and we're going to make a new button here. And this is just going to be equal to create element, which is going to be globally available. It's going to be a button type. It's not going to have an ID. It is going to have some text. Let's just say increment for now. And it's going to have some events as well. Uh, this one's going to have a single event of click. And what that's going to do with an arrow function, by the way, so we don't need to find a solution to that arrow function problem, is increment the value by saying our inc. Finally, we need to create one more element, which is going to be our h1. We're going to use bar again for h1. 
it's going to be a create element of h1 with an id of h1 and the content is just going to be uh, zero now that we have that everything should hopefully be working let's go ahead and try it out if we head back to index html we have our index tag already all we need to do is include the utils file as well and everything should work as expected if we head back to our browser now and we did everything correctly it is all still working we do have to be quite conscious of these two. Sometimes the order of scripts is going to make a big difference. And that's a problem we're going to solve later on using a tool called Webpack. Before we use Webpack, what we need to do is find a solution to our ES5, ES6 problem. I'm using an arrow function here, which is not going to be valid in ES5 JavaScript, the same JavaScript everyone is using in the world because we have old browsers because it's the early 2000s still. And we have another problem in utils as well. The problem here is we're using object.entries, and this is not valid ES6 or ES5 JavaScript. We need to find some way to make this into valid ES5 JavaScript. And that is where our first tool comes into play, Babel. Babel is a JavaScript to JavaScript compiler. It's going to compile uh, JavaScript to maybe an older dialect of JavaScript, for example, ES6 to ES5. So let's go ahead and see how that one works. The first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I already installed everything, so I'm just going to say yarn Babel. And we're going to transpile index.js into ES5 JavaScript. We're going to pass in a preset, and that's just going to be a preset uh, environment of JavaScript. In this case, I'm going to use a very specific one, which is going to be at babel slash preset env. And I believe this is the correct syntax. Let's give it a try and see what happens. And you can see that did actually kind of work. What it's done is add all of these semicolons for us, and it's also changed everything from const to var. Finally, we haven't got our arrow function anymore we now have the function. So this is going to be valid ES5 JavaScript. Everything is working correctly so far. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and actually put that into a file. So that's exactly what I'm going to do by just go and copy and pasting it. We're going to create a new file called es5.js just to make sure we remember. And this is going to work in any old browser. Finally, what we're going to do is transpile one more file and that's going to be our utils file. And this one is going to be a whole lot more messy. Let's go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. So this has generated a very huge piece of code. You can see we have this iterable to array limit function. We have array to array like function. We have unsupported iterable array and a whole bunch of extra code. The reason this is here is because of one specific function, object.entries. This is not valid uh, traditionally. So what they've done is actually polyfilled this. They've created a bunch of other functions to support this. So we're going to be able to use the same JavaScript syntax when we write our code, but it's going to transpile to something very different, which is why we end up with all of this extra code. That's kind of a necessary evil if you want to use uh, new JavaScript in old browsers. Anyway, with that in mind, what we're going to do is pipe that one into utils.es5.js just to make sure we can actually use it. And let's go ahead and just uh, delete this extra code. There's two extra lines here and make sure this is still working by heading to index.html and updating our code. All we need to do is say es5.js in here and if we did everything correctly, uh, we're going to have an error apparently. Let's see if we can fix that one up. It says identifier started with immediately after numeric. I have no idea what that means. I have this extra code down the bottom. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and quickly fix that one up. Uh, come down here and delete that code. Let's give it one more try, heading back to our browser and everything is still working. But now we're confident that it's going to work in old browsers because of Babel. So we've definitely made an improvement. The next part of this puzzle is going to be something called Webpack. So let's see how that one works. We currently have another problem and that's we're going to have all of these strip tags and it's very hard to share data other than making everything global, which is obviously not a very good idea. What would be really nice is if we could compile these into one single script. So let's go ahead and do that. I've already installed this one, but I'm going to create a new file called webpack.config.js. And this is something known as a bundler. It's going to take all of your files and bundle them together into one single file. And it's also going to give us ES modules so we can import, import, import and export variables. So we don't end up with this mess of always global variables. Now that I've created this webpack config, we're going to do a export in here, module.exports and just set up some very basic configuration. We're going to have an entry, which is where everything starts. In this case, index.js. And this is all I'm going to do for now. Let's go ahead and save it off and give this one a try. I'm going to say uh, yarn webpack, pass in my config file, and that's going to be webpack config.js, and run this one and see what happens. I'm actually going to set this one to mode development just so you can see what's going on. It's going to make the code a tiny bit more readable. And if we do an ls, I have a new directory, dist. 
if we go into dist inside of main.js, which is what it created, we have this big file. And you can see it's actually put both of our files uh, in here. We have index.js and here's all of our code on one line. So it's kind of working, I, I suppose. If we keep on going down, we can see that's the end. We haven't got our util file here. What we need to do is import and export everything. At the moment we have this create element function and we have no way to actually access this one. What we're going to do is head back to index.js and update this one. So we close this one off, head back to index.js and I'm going to import my function. So we're going to jump up here and say import create element and that's going to come from utils.js. Now that we have that, we can head back to utils.js and make sure we're exporting that one. And now we have a big improvement. Instead of having lots of small unrelated files, we have a module system and everything can import and export each other. We don't need to think about the order we include the script tags in our HTML file. So this is the role of Webpack. Now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and give it one more try. I'm going to run yarn Webpack and it's going to generate a new output. And it's now bundling both index and utils. We need both of those files for our application. If we head into main, we can see it's changed a little bit more now. We have one file here, this is index.js. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we have another file called utils, and that's going to have our utils function down here. We do have a problem though. If we come in here, we can see we actually have uh, the arrow function again. So although we have one single file, it's not going to work in old browsers. This is because Webpack and Babel are not talking to each other. We need to make sure we're using both of these tools together. And this is where things start to get complex. You can imagine how much more complex this is going to get. We need to make sure Webpack can communicate with all these different tools and bundle everything together correctly. Let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we need to do is come over to our Webpack file and we're going to use something called a loader. We're going to tell Webpack to interpret this in a specific way and use something called Babel loader to do the same transformation we did with Babel, but this time we're going to do it as part of our Webpack pipeline. This means I need to create a new uh, key called module and inside of here we're going to have something called rules I believe. Inside of here we need to check each of the files and then tell it what to do. So in this case we're going to have a check. I think we're going to say type and we pass in what type of file we'd like to check against. Uh, let's go ahead and I think it's actually test. So we're going to test against a regular expression. We're going to look for .js files and then we're going to say use and we're going to use something called babel loader. Let's go ahead and see if I remembered all of the syntax correctly. It's a very high chance I've made a mistake here, but I'm just going to give it a try anyway. If we go ahead and save this one off and close it, see what happens. If we run yarn webpack config again, we're going to get another file. And with a bit of luck, we're going to have ES5 syntax instead of ES6 syntax, syntax. If we jump inside of here, we can see that is actually not the case. I'm still getting uh, the arrow function down here. So what we need to do is figure out what I've done wrong in my webpack configuration. I'm going to go ahead and check that really quickly. Uh, this all looks completely fine to me. I think this is incorrect. It should not be test. It should be something else, but I don't really remember off the top of my head what it is. And this is one of the problems with the modern JavaScript stack. It's really, really complicated. <laughs> what I'm going to do instead is just go ahead and uh, check my other branch, which has all the correct information. <laughs> just going to commit this one off, save it and just say save. Check out master and see what the original branch actually does. Test is actually correct and so is use. So I think the problem is my regular expression is not correct going to go ahead and try and fix that one up right now. I'm going to head back to my other branch, which is just going to be called main. A little bit embarrassing that I forgot that, but who can blame me with all the complexity of this and try and use my new test file. So what I needed to do, I think, was just make sure I'm checking against the correct things, possibly ending in .js. Let's go ahead now and give this one more try and see what happens. If I do a yarn webpack and pass in the configuration, we should hopefully have something a bit better now. I'm still getting the same problem because I didn't run the correct command. And now with a bit of luck, we're going to have something a bit different. We didn't pass in our mode again. I just like to be able to read this. So I'm going to pass in development. Now, if we head in here, we're still not getting any luck. Everything is still ES5 JavaScript. And the problem here is we're not telling it which conf configuration to use. We're currently using Babel, but we haven't got the correct configuration. So what I'm going to do is create a new file called babel.config.js. And inside of here, we're going to go ahead and do a module.exports. And we're going to tell it to use that preset env, env that we used before. So we can just say presets, pass in an array, and this one is going to be at babel slash preset env. With a bit of luck, this is now going to transpile correctly to ES5 JavaScript. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So this should hopefully give us something a bit better. If we head into this.main, we can see this is now working correctly. We haven't got any arrow functions inside of our code down here anymore. We have function click instead. So we managed to transpile to ES5 JavaScript while using Babel. 
Ironically, the webpack code is using an arrow function up here, so we are going to have the same problem. It turns out what you need to do in your webpack config is add another one in here called target ES5, and this is going to make sure webpack converts itself into ES5 as well. If we go ahead and run this again one more time, we are going to get the correct output here. And what's happening is we now have got rid of that arrow function, we have now got a regular function instead. With a bit of luck, this is actually going to work correctly. So if I head back to index.html and update this one, we now have a single file. So we solved the problem of having multiple files. We just have one now, everything is in the same place. Just to make sure everything is still working, let's give it a try. We are getting an error still, it says import declarations may only appear at the top of a module. Let's go to index.js. Uh, we're actually importing the wrong file here. It should be main.js that comes from dist and this should hopefully now work. And everything is still working, but it's a whole lot more powerful and also a whole lot more complicated. Not sure if this is a good or a bad thing. It is what it is. We've now seen two parts of the stack, Babel for compiling JavaScript to other JavaScript and Webpack for bundling everything together. So far, everything is good. And this was kind of what we did for a few years. Eventually, we realized that it was difficult to write applications like this, or at least some people thought so, and they decided we needed a better way to do things. So let's go ahead and see what that might be. They decided we needed something called React. So let's go ahead and check that one out. <laughs> if we head over to index.js, this is our entire application right now. What we're going to do is convert this to use React. So the first thing we're going to do is import a few things. Let's go ahead and grab React from React. And we're also going to grab React DOM from React DOM. Now you might expect me to start writing some JSX, but that is not going to be the case at all. This is not how React started. It was uh, not always using JSX. And we're going to see how that works without JSX right now. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new uh, new function. I'm going to call this one app. <laughs> you would have tradi traditionally used something like react.create class, but we're going to do it using the new syntax. Let's go ahead and create a new count and a set count. We're going to use a hook, which is for state, and we're no longer doing imperative updates. We're using React to update automatically using their reactivity. We're going to say react.useState inside of here and set that one to be zero by default. And then we're going to return something. We don't have JSX right now. What we're going to do is say react.createElement and create a new element. I'm going to pass in a div here for my first one, and that's going to have an array of children. We're not going to have any props, so let's go ahead and pass an empty object here. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and create is going to be our button. We're going to have a button, and this one is going to have props. The prop is going to be on click, and when this one is called, it's going to just go ahead and say uh, set count and increment count by one. Now that we have that, we're going to need some content. I'm going to say increment. And this is a pretty difficult to read, and that is kind of the idea of behind a JSX, which we're going to see in just a moment. Anyway, now that we have that one, we're going to have one more element. So let's go ahead and copy paste this. This one is going to be our count. It's going to be a H1, and inside of here, we're going to have our count. Let's just go ahead and render our count down here. And we're not going to have any props, so I'm going to delete that one. Now that we have this, we have to mount our application. So we're going to say react DOM dot render and render out our application. The first argument is going to be, I believe, the application. So let's go ahead and pass in our app. And that means you have to do react.create element again, a very convoluted passing in app. And the second one is going to be where to mount it. So I'm going to say document.get element by ID and grab my element by ID. In this case, I'm going to call it, let's say app. And we're gonna need to create that one as well. So let's head over to index.html and create it. Let's go ahead and create that one. I'm going to call it div ID with app go ahead and instantiate it. Finally, let's give this one a try. With a bit of luck, this is actually all going to work. So what we're going to do is we're using React, we're not using JSX, and we're going to bundle this all up. And with a bit of luck, it's going to work. Things never seem to work first try though, so I would be surprised if it did. Just go ahead and compile this. You can see that was a lot slower because React is a very big library. If we jump into dist main, this is where things start to go uh, kind of downhill. It is no longer possible to read the output of Webpack. This is just impossible. It's this huge mess. And if there is a bug in here, good luck finding it. Anyway, let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. We can see everything is still rendering and somewhat surprisingly, everything is still actually working correctly. I didn't make any mistakes. We do have this error or this warning. I'm going to ignore that one for now. We're now doing exactly the same thing with a whole lot more complexity under the hood. So now we've seen another part of the stack. We've seen Babel, we've seen Webpack, and we have seen React. But things are still not complicated enough. The next thing people realized was it's very hard to write this syntax. It's kind of difficult to read. It's so JavaScripty now, let's head back the other direction to HTML. And they did that by using something called JSX. And that is what we're going to do now. 
To start off, I'm going to go ahead and move my file. Actually, I'm going to copy it just in case, uh, index.js to index.jsx now, and I'm going to rem remove the original file. Finally, let's go into here and convert this one to JSX. And this is going to be fairly simple. We're just going to have a div in here, and that's going to be a button with an onClick listener. And as you can imagine, this is going to do, it's just going to call that event. So we're just going to say set count, count plus one. Now that we have that, we just need to go ahead and render, let's say increment down here. And then we're going to close off our button. This should be a button, not a div. And then we're going to create our final one, which is going to be that H1. And things are now heading back the opposite direction. We started off with all HTML, then we moved all the way to JavaScript, and now we're sort of heading back to HTML. A little bit ironic, but they say things come in cycles. Anyway, with a bit of luck, this is now going to work. This is a fragment, so we use the very awkward fragment syntax. You have to have a root, and if that's going to be a fragment, there's nothing, nothing you can do about that. Let's save it off and see if I didn't make any mistakes. If we head back here, uh, this is still working because we didn't even compile Webpack. Let's go ahead and try and compile Webpack and we are of course going to get an error here because we changed the name of our, our input. This should now be JSX. And we're now going to check against JSX files as well and see what happens. Let's go ahead and try again one more time. And of course, this is going to fail as well. We're attempting to compile JavaScript and this is certainly not JavaScript. We need an extra preset. What I'm going to do is update Babel config and we're going to pass in a different preset. We now have two presets. We have ES5 and we're also going to have React. So things are getting more and more complex, more and more layers of complexity. Welcome to modern web development. Anyway, that did indeed compile and we could go and look at the main JS file, but there's just no point. This thing is completely unreadable at this point. So let's just give up on that and hope for the best. If we head back to our browser, everything is still working. Our error is gone because JSX does some magic under the hood and we are definitely uh, still making the exact same app just with more and more uh, layers of complexity. Anyway, this was kind of where we were for a few years. Everyone was somewhat happy with how things were working, or at least they weren't unhappy. But then we realized JavaScript is not that great because there are no types. What if we had types? And that is where the final part of this puzzle comes in, TypeScript. And by extension, TSX. So we're now going to have typed JSX, which is a derivative of JavaScript kind of. So let's see how that one might work. The first thing we need to do is change the name of the file again. So it's now going to become index.tsx and we're going to go ahead and update this one now as well. We haven't got many types here, but we do have one. This one is going to be a number via this generic. <laughs> now that we have that, let's go ahead and try and compile this again. We're going to have to update our Webpack configuration again. And this one is now going to become a tsx. Let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. Just to save a bit of time, I'm going to run yarn Webpack in watch mode and that's going to give me exactly the same thing but it's going to do it automatically every time I save up off my file. We're going to put this one mode in, let's just say development for now. And then we're going to go ahead and say watch. And this is going to run automatically. Huh. This is actually going to fail. We have an error. See if we can figure it out. This is the wrong name. It should be TSX. If we try again, we're going to get a, apparently not going to get an error, which is kind of surprising. Let's go ahead and try this out. You can see this is completely broken. It says number is not defined. And this does make perfect sense. If we head back to our file, we have this generic type here, and this is not part of JavaScript. We need to use a TypeScript compiler as well. So now we have two compilers, TypeScript and Babel. What this means is we need to update our Webpack configuration. We're going to have an additional way to compile. We're going to use another loader that's going to be called TSLoader. So we're going to convert the TypeScript to JavaScript and then JavaScript to ES5 JavaScript. Let's go ahead and give this one a try. With a bit of luck, this is going to work. It is even slower now, but that it is what it is. We have a different error now, which is to do with React not being defined. Again, this is very confusing and very difficult to debug unless you really know what's going on. It turns out you need to either configure TypeScript or you can just go ahead and say input all as, and this is going to fix our problem. Finally, everything is working again. And now we're in a pretty good place, at least in terms of the modern stack. We've seen Babel for compiling, we've seen TypeScript for compiling, we've seen Webpack for bundling, and we've seen React for the actual UI layer. We have managed to merge both our JavaScript and our HTML into a single file. You might think this is the end, you're sorely mistaken. What if we go ahead and merge some style in here as well? And it turns out that is possible. I'm going to create a new file called index.css and we're going to give this one a color of blue. Of course, what you could do is just import this to index.html like any sane person would do, but we're not sane, we are insane, we are modern web developers. So of course, we're going to import everything into exactly the same file inside of here. 
I'd like to import my CSS into my JavaScript file or my TypeScript file or my TypeScript SX file, I suppose you would call it at this point. Anyway, this means we're going to need another loader. So uh, let's go ahead and create one more extra loader. And this is going to be the last one that we create. We're going to need two things inside of here. We are going to need CSS loader to load the CSS. And we're also going to need something called style loader to make it inject to the document. Let's go ahead and finally give this one a try and see what happens. Hopefully we're not going to get any errors. We actually are. And this is another kind of symptom of modern web development. It is incredibly confusing and difficult to figure out what the heck is actually going on here. I think these might be in the wrong order. So I'm going to go ahead and try them in the opposite order. This is generally what I do nowadays. If I don't know what's going on, I just try things randomly until they work. And usually I stumble across the correct solution eventually. Let's give this one a try as well and see what happens. And that is successfully building. Finally, if we come back here, everything is working correctly. The, the, the number is now blue. So you can see we've kind of evolved and sort of taken a few steps backwards as well, depending who you ask. We started off with code. Now we have code that we transpile down to old JavaScript from TypeScript. We bundle it with Webpack. We're using React. And of course, we're also bundling some styles and who knows what else inside of there. Eventually, we get our giant bundle. We ship it to the browser and we build exactly the same thing people have been building for the last 15 or 20 years. We just did it, it cost us a lot more money and a lot more time, and we just uh, increased the complexity significantly. Anyway, I hope this gave you a good idea of how the tools work together. It was a bit cynical, but there are a lot of great things about these tools as well. We have things like hot reload, we have lots of different techniques to be able to use modern JavaScript in old browsers. So it's not all terrible. I'm actually pretty happy with the way the stack is right now. As long as you don't have to configure it, everything is pretty nice to work with. I hope this gave you a bit of an idea of how things fit together and how all the different tools are interacting with each other. And I'll see you in the next video.